Hi everyone, welcome to Facebook Live. Here we are, Sunday night, Facebook Live with Pastor Louie. Yeah, I'm glad that you're on with me today because we're just going to be focusing on the Lord. Isn't that great? And we're going to be uh, studying the book of 2 Peter. We're coming along, uh, chapter 1, verses 5 through 11, with the topic, Faith is what you know and show. And so it's going to be a good one. We're going to sing some classic praise songs and, and just pray for, for you and your needs. And you can post those right now. And you can start chatting with one another and just send me some thumbs up and let me know that you're listening. If you're not able to, that's just fine. We know you're with us in spirit. And we're just so glad that you're here. We're going to be encouraging you in the Lord. So with that, let's pray. Oh, Father, we thank you so much for this time, Lord, to be together once again. We thank you for a Facebook Live program. We thank you, Lord, for this opportunity to worship you. I pray you would bless everyone in the house, Lord, everyone that's going to be coming in and listening. We pray for the first-timers, Lord, and we also pray, Lord, for those who are just thinking about Jesus and, and committing their life to the Lord. We pray for all skeptics and doubters, Lord, that they would just listen with an open heart, and Lord, that you would just speak to them by your Holy Spirit and reveal Christ to them and their need for salvation, and how Jesus is the Savior, how he died and rose again, that we might be saved. And Lord, for all those who are just needing that encouragement, I pray, Lord, that you would reach them tonight by your Holy Spirit, and just soothe all those doubts and fears, Lord, and those hurts and those pains, and all those uncertainties. Right now, in Jesus' name we pray, amen, amen. All right, are you ready to praise the Lord? Let's do it. Let's sing the old song, Shout to the Lord. We do the classics around here, don't we? So, let's do it. Yeah. 
your face with all of my heart. And I will see your face with all of my mind. And I will see your face with all of my strength. For you are my Lord. And I will see your face.
My eyes are dry. My faith is old. My heart is hard. My prayers are cold. And I know how I ought to be alive to you. Join me in prayer. Father, we just thank you so much for your Holy Spirit working in our hearts, Lord. We just do long for more love and more power in our lives and our hearts, Lord. We know, we know what your word says. Our heart is incurably sick, Lord, just without you. But we thank you that we have Jesus in our lives and how you can renew our hearts and change our hearts, Lord. And just take away all the, the bad attitudes, and Lord, we just really pray for that. Anything we're, we're kind of striving with right now, Lord, or someone we're irritated at, or we're just, you know, kind of like not in a good place with um, our life and what's going on presently, Lord Jesus, we just pray, Lord, for it uplifting right now in the name of Jesus, Lord. We just really pray so much for your wonderful touch upon our lives that would just change that lord and just make us more like you so we can yes truly shout to the lord until all the earth that he's so good and then back it up lord with a life well lived in you by the power of your holy spirit we just pray you'd forgive us of our sins lord and just renew us right now we thank you so much for that restoration and that renewal in you lord we just love you so much and we just want to pray, Lord, for the needs right now, Lord, whatever might be going on. We want to pray for what uh, uh, Gracie shared last week about her friend. And we want to pray for her, Rosa, Lord, that she uh, lost her husband and is grieving. And we would like to lift her up, Lord Jesus, to you and ask, Lord, that you truly would be with her as she has lost her, her mate, her soulmate, Lord, and is a widow now. And Lord, it's just, it's huge. It's just the biggest thing ever. And we just pray, Lord, for comfort of your Holy Spirit. Lord, thank you that whatever gap there is in our life, something that, that we miss or something we don't have or something that's been taken away from us, especially a loved one, thank you for what your word says, that you fill all in all. And you can step into that void, Lord, and just fill it and just touch and soothe that heart. And we pray for Rosa. For this, Lord Jesus, for her. And Lord, we just pray for all the others, Lord Jesus. We know there's just so many that, that we know that have lost loved ones uh, this past year. We pray for Jacqueline Goudet, who lost her husband Michael at serving the Lord's missionaries down in Nicaragua. Comfort for her and her boys, William and Samuel. And we pray for Julie Grimes, Lord, who lost her husband Tom. A missionary come back and just five months later after uh, leaving the mission field passed away and Lord um, these we know these things are so much COVID related and there's others that you know that are, are not Lord it's just circumstantial and it's we just really continue to pray for those who have lost loved ones we pray for those who are struggling with um, current situations we pray for our youth pastors wife let's agree now for Shannon Jewell for healing for her in Jesus name from this major stroke that she had and she's just been needing help for a long long time and is not really out of the woods yet you know so 
we just pray, Lord, for her, that she would, you would heal her paralysis, that she would be able to eat and drink, Lord, and, and uh, rehab and do, just, we just pray for that miracle, Lord God, and that you would comfort Steve and the children uh, as well, Lord, uh, over this. And Lord, again, we just, we, we, of course, we have our question marks, Lord, but we know that we're just to submit those to you and and Lord, and let you just bring about your will and trust in the Lord with all of our heart and don't lean on our own understanding because Lord, some of these things are just so heavy and we can't wrap our brain around, around it and then Satan starts to lie to us about your love, Lord, and if you love us and why would that happen, that kind of thing. And Lord, we just pray against that in Jesus' name, those filthy lies. And for whatever else, Lord, that we're going through, we just pray, Lord, right now that you would just... Go right in that situation, Lord. Show your mighty power. Lord, you said ask and we would uh, receive and knock and we would have the doors open to us. And if we, if we would seek, that we would find. And we pray for that, Lord God. And that you've given us the faith to believe you for, for just great things as we go into this year, Lord God. As tomorrow's a, you know, the second month of the new year, so we can't say Happy New Year anymore. Or top of the year. Lord, we're just going on. We can't believe how fast everything is going. And, and it's a new political landscape in America. And uh, the coronavirus is still trying to, you know, work itself out, Lord. And we just really pray for your grace and for our government and for our new administration. And we pray for peace in our cities, Lord God. And we just, again, pray for protection and healing uh, for those who are suffering and being challenged with this virus. Lord, we pray for the medical community. Um, and we pray for all those who need that vaccine, Lord God. And we just really pray, uh, Jehovah Rapha, the Lord our healer, that you would just bring forth that healing to each and every one of us and protect us, Lord, and protect our families, Lord God. Thank you for how you have provided for us. It's been just so amazing the last year, Lord God, of all that you have shown us and how different life has been and how we've had to be flexible and, and so forth. And we're still learning things, Lord, as, as sometimes these trials are not quickly solved, like in a half hour, you know, uh, episode on, on TV. Lord God, it's just more uh, than that. This is heavy stuff, Lord, but we know that you're a big God and we magnify the Lord and say he is big. And, Lord, you can take care of these things, and all of us, and all of us all at once. And we just pray, Lord, that you would be working, and even in this dark hour, that you would shine your light, Lord, that you would save people. Your spirit is not restricted. We pray for a revival in the land. We pray for a revival in the church. We pray, Lord, that you would do an awesome work in these last days. And just show us, Lord, how great you are. As the devil is manifesting his darkness and his deeds of evil, so you, Lord, even greater, would just show your mighty power and your goodness and your grace and your salvation. And for people to be saved, we pray for our loved ones who need to be saved. We pray for our friends. We pray for our neighbors. We pray for our fellow employees and we pray for our mail carrier and everybody that we know the checker at the grocery store and everybody we know by name and and everybody that lord we just drive by and we pray for the homeless and we pray lord for the drug addicted and we pray for all those who are in dire situations and whose marriages are just failing and falling apart lord god we know that you're the god of the possible inside the impossible and we praise you, Lord God, bring forth your mighty power and show forth your grace and your love at this time in all of these situations and more, Lord God, as we just look to you. And we thank you, Lord, for this time of prayer, and we just pray you would bless your word now to our hearts. In Jesus' name we pray, amen, amen. All right. Well, that was a good time of prayer. I know you were uh, agreeing with me there. And we want to turn in the Bible now to... 2 Peter 1, 5 through 11. The topic is faith is what you know and show. It's not just your head knowledge, but it's what you live out in your life. So again, that's 2 Peter uh, chapter 1, verses 5 through 11. Let me just read those verses. I had such a great time studying for this and uh, thinking about you. And again, um, 
just want to let you know I pray for you every single day. You know, this is, uh, we're up in church, you know, and I'm a shepherd and the sheep are here. And, and so, you know, I just want to let you know that, you know, when we sign off, you're in our hearts and uh, praying for you and just thinking about you. And so, if, again, if you leave your prayer requests, then um, we will be, I will be praying for you. Oh, and I forgot to mention, again, I did last week, but uh, here's a copy of my, my new book. I finally got my Shepherd to Sheep devotionals in a uh, daily devotional. So can you read that very well? And so it's um, Shepherd to Sheep, might be some glare there, uh, daily devotionals, um, and it just it's a two-minute read. And you can get it through Amazon.com. Just type in my name, Louis Monteith, and it'll come up. You can uh, get it for your iPad or your Kindle or get it in paperback. So I've ordered a bunch of them. I'm just giving them. And I want to thank you for all those who have uh, supported this um, endeavor, endeavor because you've been buying the book. And it's so cool because um, one sister in the Lord bought five of them so she could give them out you know, to others. And she was so cute. She at church. She wanted me to sign them, you know, for the people that were on her heart, you know, that she's praying for. And some know the Lord, some don't. Some are kind of astray. And uh, I, th I thought that was so cool. But that brings up the fact that you could also, you know, send it to a friend uh, as you go on Amazon and pay for it. Um, you have the opportunity to put someone else's address in there, and it'll come to their their door. And it just takes, like I think, like two days to get uh, this book. So I've been um, enjoying it myself, and so I hope that you can enjoy it too. Thanks so much for your, your uh, prayers and support with this ministry. All right, so now, again, we're in 2 Peter 1, 5 through 11, and it says this, But also for this very reason, giving all diligence, add to your faith virtue, to virtue, knowledge, to knowledge, self-control, to self-control, perseverance, to perseverance, godliness, to godliness, brotherly kindness, and to brotherly kindness, love. For if these things are yours and abound, you will be neither barren nor unfruitful in the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. For he who lacks these things is short-sighted even to blindness and has forgotten that he was cleansed from his sins. So that's a really, really good one, isn't it? So um, there, here in verse 5 it says, but also. In other words, Peter is saying there is something beyond the new birth. You know, once you know Jesus... Um, that's great. You're saved, but there is a whole process of spiritual growth. And Peter enumerates all of all of these things one by one, right? So, do you like addition? Um, well, here it is, and um, it's it's a good memory one too because you could like memorize it. And throughout the week, I was trying to you know memorize these. And even in bed one time, I was thinking like, you know, I woke up and it was like, oh. You know, and I start, I tried to uh, go through them, and uh, it was so cool because, you know, it was like I started falling asleep and, you know, with the Word of God on, on my, my mind. So it's kind of cool to do that uh, mental thing, kind of like we talked about last week, uh, you know, as you, throughout the day and even as you uh, wake up in the middle of the night, as you can think about the Word of God and try to quote Scripture the best that you can, and, um, you know, it's just so pure and cleansing and and it helps your fears to melt away as well. So it says here, to give all diligence. In other words, it's, these things aren't going to come automatically. Why? Because we're sinners, and we have that propensity to not do these things. We're born in sin, and we're born selfish, and it's all about me, and uh, I, I don't want these things in my life. You know, my flesh, my worldly flesh says, right? Uh, but my spirit says, no, Louis, you do want these things. And so it, how important it says right here to add to your faith virtue. Add, add. There's more to just getting saved and knowing Jesus. Amen? We've, there's some things to add on now. And the first thing is virtue. Add to your faith virtue. And it means moral excellence. 
You don't see those things in the world. People are unethical. We know that more and more in our nation and, all, and in our world today. And when someone stands out with moral excellence, it really is, is it, it stands out, you know? And it really backs up the truth that you share about Jesus, doesn't it? Because you're just like sharing the Lord and you back it up with a morally excellent life. Of course, not that you're, you and I are perfect or anything, but people can tell the real deal, you know. Uh, people are trying to find out, you know, some kind of scandal. Remember, they looked at Daniel, and they couldn't find anything. You know, he was the true blue. And that's what we need to be as well, you know. It's like, you know, if you find fault, you will find fault in my life. But I love Jesus, and I, I, I do my best in following the Lord and, um, and doing the right thing. And people can, can see that in your life, and they can also sense it as well. You know, there's just that, that sense like, wow, I'm dealing with a person that, that is, is different. And you'll stand out. You know, the light in the darkness, of course. It's like from far away, you can see a candle flicker. And so that's why the Lord brings you and I into people's lives, the people that we work with and the people that we bump into and associate with and all, it's all for, you know, a purpose that we would just, you know, have that moral excellence. So add to your faith virtue. When the world doesn't have virtue and is impure and, and just unclean, remember last week we talked about the rottenness, the decay that's in the world. No, uh, we were standing out for Jesus. And so next it says, uh, after add to your faith virtue, add to your virtue knowledge. So I like this. This is a strain of things. You ever uh, strain uh, beads, like for a bracelet or something? Or uh, we used to do popcorn and cranberries for the Christmas tree with the sewing needle. And uh, how beautiful it was on the tree. And so we're, we're beating these things together. So add to your faith virtue, and to virtue, knowledge. And uh, this is moral wisdom. We talked about moral excellence, now we're talking about moral wisdom or moral discernment. And this is how we can think uh, and process things in the world, you know, and kind of discern about, you know, what's going on in the world and the, with the reporting of the news and... You know, we've talked about fake news and, and uh, inflated news and, and, and so forth and so on, that we can kind of have that moral wisdom, that knowledge that knows the word, but also knows how to apply the word to the situation so that we won't be surprised about what's going on in the world. And when people ask you, oh, what do you think about what's going on? Or what do you think about, you know, Biden and, and uh, Harris and all? And uh, you just go, you know what, you know, the, I believe we we're in the last days and the Bible says this, that, or the other. This is all a platform because people like to, to chit chat. Of course, a lot of it's online now, isn't it? But still, you're in your, your, uh, your Zoom meeting and people say, okay, we got to take a five minute break. And people are talking about, you know, this, that, or the other. <clears throat> and then... Uh, you know, you just, we just start sharing, you know, with, with people. It's just so cool to have that moral wisdom that comes from knowing the Lord. And we can discern between right and wrong and, and really what's going on in the world. And, you know, we won't, like, be freaked out by what's going on in the world. We'll be able to just go, well, what do you expect <laughs> with the world that's turning away from God and all this ungodly legislature now? You know, written on the first day of, uh, you know, the new administration, um, so much that was not godly, you know, and it's like, oh, wow, here we go. But, hey, again, what do you expect when we uh, turn away from the Lord and, and reject his truth? This is what you get, you know. So it's kind of like you're grieved about what's going on, uh, you're hurt by what's going on. But you also have that sensibility, it's like, <clears throat> oh well, you know, and it's time to move on with all of this. And uh, to just go, well, I just, just we got to keep praying. I got to keep living that life. When someone doesn't represent 
my morals uh, in government or wherever, in entertainment and this, that, and the other in the world, it's, I guess it's up to me and it's up to you and it's up to all of us to live for Jesus. Amen? Yeah. And uh, that's more of a grassroots revival. And don't think like, oh, it's, it, we're just sunk. We can't do anything. Are you kidding? The Lord's not willing that any should perish, but all should come to repentance. Let's keep praying and keep living that life for Jesus. Amen? And keep expecting uh, revival. Uh, even on whatever level that, that God is going to, to make it be, you know? Um, and not give up. Let's not give up on our nation, not give up on, on our loved ones, you know? And again, to have that moral wisdom. And so after knowledge, it says, add to your knowledge self-control. Oh, man, that's what we need in the world today, don't we? It means mastering one's emotions rather than being controlled by them. And you might say, well, oh, man, I'm just such an off-the-cuff person. I'm spontaneous, and I, I hate that about myself, and I wish I was more patient with people and with situations, and, and I fly off, and I get angry, and I sulk, and... You know, I get uh, mad at people, and I just have this private cold war uh, in my heart against them. Well, praise God, we have the Holy Spirit to give us self-control, that we don't have to give in to how we're feeling. Uh, we could uh, feel, you know, wrong feelings inside, and we know it's not right according to God's word, some kind of passion or lust or craving or whatever it might be then um, we just know that the, the Holy Spirit gives us self-control. It's like, you know what, I'm feeling, I have an urge to, uh, you know, sin, to um, kind of let myself go in, in certain areas. Uh, but no, I'm not going to do that. That's what I used to do. I'm born again now. I know Jesus, and I'm just going to walk with the Lord and, and, and say no to all of that. I, I don't want that in my life anymore. I want to have self-control. And so, uh, you know, God is so good as we just yield to the Spirit and say, Lord Jesus, help me. He will. He hears that prayer. And He will help you to not fall into that temptation or fly off at the handle. You will have that uh, self-control. Isn't that cool? It's not you. It's the fruit of the Spirit. Amen? Galatians 5, 22 and 23. And then it says, um, to self-control, perseverance. Now, perseverance means to bear up under pressure until it's over, right? And so it's not just patience, which is what we need, but perseverance is just that stick to Um So it's that staying power uh, that will die before it gives in, you know? And uh, the Lord gives us that tenacity to just stick with that situation, to stick with that marriage, to stick with that job, to keep going on with that health problem, to keep trusting the Lord about that financial situation, or to keep loving that person, you know, and uh, that uh, um, whole thing in your life that you're, you're struggling with as far as trying to be content with it, you know, where you live and, and uh, <clears throat> you know, your, your setup and, and so forth and so on. It's like, you know what? This is what I have, and the Bible says to be content, and so I'm going to keep persevering. And, you know, that's what I had to do with, um, where's my book again? Let me tell you about perseverance. You know this thing took me six months to work on, and, um, you know, right here in my office, and there's a desk over there, and um, just every spare time I had, I just went over and just typeset this whole thing and I had to work on grammar and you know the the devotionals were already done uh, when Kelsey was working at Starbucks a couple miles from our house I would just go down there and I edited you know all of them and then uh, about six months ago I started formatting this book for publication and I'm telling you it got so tedious. After a couple months, I was like, done. I was like, done. But I had to come back in here and just keep on working. And I would try to play, you know, music in the background or 
try to hear some uh, some podcasts or things like that, but it got so boring, you know. But I, the Lord just gave me the strength to keep going on. And then it came to a point where it's like, yeah, I, I admit I just wanted to move on or not so much give up, but just kind of shelf it and just go, but, you know, I, I just want to go on to other things. And I have some other projects in mind and other um, books and, and ministry things that I want to put my efforts into. But I felt the Lord say, no, Louie, don't do something. And Cheryl would encourage me to, you know, don't start something else until you finish this. It's like, oh, Lord, you know, self-control, perseverance and all, faith and uh, virtue and to have a good attitude and all these things. And I'm telling you, one day, it just was done. It was done. And I went out and told Cheryl, I, I just couldn't believe it. And, and then um, I, I ordered it, and it came in the mail, because you, know, you got to get a hard copy to, to see how it is. And I was like, Lord Jesus, there's not one thing to change. You know, the margins, the typesetting, um, the font size, um, everything. I'm like, I don't have to like resubmit it or, or do anything. My son-in-law, Jonas, did a great job on the, the cover, you know. And um, I just thank Jesus Christ for this. And I, I just take the time to share that with you because um, you might be going through something. that might not be writing a book, but, you know, all things are common as far as the struggles that we face. And so I want to encourage you, just keep going on. The successful people in life don't give up. And in the Lord, you know, God's success and prosperity comes after a time of testing and wilderness. And you just got to keep going, you know. You got to keep plodding and ba-dump, ba-dump. And it's like life isn't fun and I'm just tired and I want to go somewhere and have fun. And it's like, nope, we've got to fulfill our responsibilities and then the Bible says you reap, you will reap if you don't faint or give up. Amen? Can we clap on that one? Woohoo! Can you give me a little clap icon or something like that if you can figure that out on your phone? So, okay, so now after perseverance, it says godliness. Godliness. And that just means um, to be upright in the Lord and to be godlike, you know? As God works in our life, we're going to display that, that godliness. Um, we're going to have, uh, uh, it, it also talks about having reverential uh, fear or religious fear, which is a healthy fear, you know. So um, that word godly, that's, that's what we need. And then uh, it says, add to godliness, brotherly kindness. So now we get in from the, the inside kind of things, characteristics, which is very important in God's eyes, is character. Uh, the world is like, no, we don't care about character. It's all about being funny or successful or, or, or whatever, you know. It's like, no, God says real success is the inside job, what's in your heart. That's what, that's what God wants. The world will forsake the inside character to go after success and prosperity and, and what they want. And the problem with that is the world just goes, oh, great, oh, I, this person's so awesome. Yeah, but they have totally um, compromised their life. That's not of the Lord. We shouldn't applaud, applaud that. You know, they gave up time with, with their kids or, or their wife because they're trying to be successful. And, honey, I can't come home for dinner and uh, once again and that kind of thing. Like what? Just to climb the corporate ladder and to kiss up to your boss and... And do all these, it's not worth it, you know? Maybe God doesn't want you up there so high. You know, it's better to sacrifice and to, to give it all for your kids and for your your spouse. And uh, to be a team player with your family and, and to make sure you're not overdoing it on your health. Or what are you trying to prove kind of thing, you know, it, with your success and all of your workaholism. You're trying to escape something, you're trying to prove something. Uh, is it all about performance? Um, what if all that was taken away? Would you still be okay with it? You know? Um, and 
we should be because of Jesus and just having Jesus in our life and our family and our friends and and just knowing the Lord and just living that that simple life and letting God bring forth that prosperity and that success as we keep our priorities in order. Amen? Amen. Kind of talking like an older man now, but you know what? I am. So I might as well use, uh, you know, what I got and who I am uh, to be able to uh, to share that. I, I just pray in a more fatherly way uh, or more of a pastoral shepherd kind of way uh, for the sheep. And so now we go from those inside things to the next is brotherly kindness. Brotherly kindness. Isn't that cool? You know what the word is? Philadelphia. It's the original language in the Greek, uh, which means brotherly love. And um, yes, even the city of Philadelphia, where, where Ben Franklin lived, and the, the Liberty Bell and all that. The city of love. I don't know what you know the crime rate is there right now, but... You know, uh, we can have that brotherly love uh, for each other and that affection in Christ. And, you know, as you know the Lord, we so often will feel like we're closer to our Christian family and church family, maybe more than our physical family because of all the strife and the fallouts and things like that. Remember that one time where they, they said to Jesus, Hey, your family's outside, you know, your, your mom and your, your brothers, and they want to talk to you. And Jesus said, you know, who are my brothers and my mother and my sisters? Is it not you who hear the word of the Lord and do it? And I'm sure he went out and talked to them later, but he was just trying to say that, um, you know, how cool it is to have a, a, a church family. And I, I just, I'm so grateful for uh, the church family that, that we have right now and uh, you know just knowing the Lord too since uh, being a teenager I've had uh, a handful of good churches and um, all of them were just so special and the people inside of the church were so special um, I think about them some of them are still my Facebook friends and all and um, you know from from all the different cities where Cheryl and I have lived and and where we served in, in the ministry, you know, because uh, we started young and, and we've moved around some, you know, and uh, how special the family of God has been and just like cried every time we left somewhere, you know, um, but so satisfied with where uh, we're at presently, you know, at our church and I just love going to church and it was, I was so thankful when things started opening up and we could go back you know, and see each other, and it's like you can't really, really hug and shake hands and stuff, but, you know, we're just there, and we have bonds and, and relationships, and I just think it's so cool uh, to have that brotherly kindness. Let me tell you what kindness is. Kindness is love in action. Remember what the Bible says, let us not love in word or in tongue, but in deed and in truth. It's like, oh, yeah, I love you, man. It's like, well, well, what have I done for that person to show my love? Little acts of kindness. And uh, men who are married, this is what really blesses your wife, is when you do kind things that she doesn't ask you throughout the day. Or how about this one? You anticipate her honeydews before she puts them on the list, you know? And, um, you know, it's, she'll, she'll just go, wow, that's so kind. You, you washed my car. You... You filled it up with gas. You you did this, you know, and, and you saw that need and you, you took care of it. You know, my clunking wash machine. You you called the guy out and, and had it fixed. Honey, I love you, you know. <laughs> what do you want for dinner tonight kind of thing. And then you can do it with your friends. You notice your, your friends, uh, you know, enjoy something or whatever. And it's like, well, then you like you buy it for them. Or you, you text them a scripture and you contact someone that you haven't in a while. It's like, oh, that was so cool and that was so kind and, you know, it's so meaningful. Someone was thinking of me to do that, you know, to give me the reach out, to give me the blessing. And then in turn, I want to, of course, do that to others. So kindness is love in action. And we can do that within the body of Christ. And then uh, it says... What's the next one here? 
uh, and to brotherly kindness, love. So there's the cherry on top, love. And what, what word is it, the Greek word that we know? Right, agape. I heard someone say it, agape. It means affection or benevolence, and it wraps all the virtu virtues aforementioned here together as one, just with a nice bow on top, because love is the greatest thing, and love conquers all. Amen? All right, so we, we got through those, and now we've got, um, what, two more verses, and it says, if these things are yours and abound, you know, they're abounding, you're working on them, you will be neither barren nor unfruitful in the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. And barren just means lazy and useless. We don't want to be a lazy and useless Christian, you know. And uh, let's just be looking for ways to, to show these qualities and to be active in our Christian life, not just to know the Lord, but remember, faith is what you know and show. That's why I kind of wrote that out. Faith is what you know and show, you know. It's like, how, how can I do these things? How can I be a blessing, you know, to, to someone else? I don't want to just sit on a pew. Ask your pastor what, what you can do at your church, you know, and, uh, and look for things around your, your family and your, and your house, and, and how can I just be a blessing to, to someone else, and you know, God will show you. You know how so often you get those ideas like, oh, I should call this person, or, or I should do this, and take flowers to, uh, you know, my friend's grandmother's in the convalescent home, and, and I thought about taking her flowers, but time just goes by, and day after day, and week after week, and it's like, you know, um, let's just do it, right? So let's not be lazy and, and useless. Let's really budget time, you know, for, for things like that. I know we have our responsibilities and our time management. But remember uh, when Jesus was, was going on and that one lady tugged at his robe. And he stopped, you know. And um, he healed that woman with the issue of blood. Amen? Amen. And so... Uh, Let's not be neither barren nor unfruitful, which means unproductive. Let's be a very uh, fruit-bearing and productive uh, Christian. And then the last verse, For if these things are yours and abound, you will be neither barren nor... Oh, excuse me, verse 9. Sorry. For he who lacks these things is short-sighted. That sounds like going to the eye doctor, doesn't it? Even to blindness... And has forgotten that he was cleansed from his sins. Now, we don't want to be, be uh, short-sighted and, and, and uh, even to blindness. A professing Christian who is missing the virtues mentioned above is therefore unable to discern his true spiritual condition and thus can have no assurance of his salvation. That's what one commentator says. We don't, we don't want to be short-sighted. We don't want to be blinded in the Christian life. There's enough Christians who just don't get it. They can't see. Why? Because it's all about them, and they're just not really walking tight with the Lord. They've got issues, and they haven't really taken them to the Lord, and they're just festering, and they're bitter. Uh, come on, you know, we know people like that, and we know the propensity of our own heart, and it's like, I don't want to be that kind of Christian. I can go there easily, right? We have that same capacity. Let's not go there. Let's not be bitter. And um, we don't want it to uh, be short-sighted of, of these things, of what it really means to follow Jesus. One commentator says that um, the failure to diligently pursue spiritual virtues produces spiritual amnesia. I like that because it says in verse 9 that uh, it says, He has forgotten that he was cleansed from his old sins. Let's not forget. Uh, that we have uh, forgotten that. Hey, we got more verses. Um, verse 10 and 11. I thought we were just going through 9. So look at verse 10. Therefore, brethren, be even more diligent to make your calling and election sure. For if you do these things, you will never stumble. And so doing these things that Peter just mentioned confirms of the reality of our calling and our election by God in our lives. They confirm it. And so, if we don't have these things, it's like, you know, these things aren't confirmed. 
And, you know, if a person really knows the Lord, they're going to be, you know, uh, a fruit-bearing Christian. And uh, that's what Jesus said. You'll know them by their fruits. And a good tree bears forth good fruit, fruit and a bad tree bears bad fruit. Man, I was walking Coco this morning, and uh, our neighbor has, it's, there's this old, like, a house that used to be like a chicken ranch or something. And it, it's, I mean, it's all suburban now, all these, these homes, you know, everywhere. It's all city and everything. But um, it's the old house. And they haven't changed much. And there's this old avocado tree out front. It is huge. And I just stopped. Coco was just like enjoying the grass area on the parking strip. And I was like, I wonder if there's any avocados up there. And I looked in. They kind of all blend. They're the same color. There is a million avocados there. And I thought, wow, they're enjoying guacamole in that house. They're going to have enough for Super Bowl next week. And um, I was like, that is really, really cool. I want to be like that. I want to be bearing fruit for the Lord. Amen. And make my calling and election sure. I know Jesus. I'm going to heaven. And these things are in my life. Okay, cool. You know, I'm, I'm on the right road and I'm doing the right thing. Amen. Okay, now the last verse. Verse 11. For so an entrance. Look at this. This gets you excited. For so an entrance will be supplied to you abundantly into the everlasting kingdom of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Oh, well, now we're going to talk about heaven. In other words, you and I will have a rich welcome into the eternal kingdom of Christ. Amen? We just don't want to slip in, you know, and just kind of go be all embarrassed, like, oh, I wasn't a fruit-bearing Christian. But no, for so an entrance will be supplied to you abundantly. It's like, come on in, Louie. Come on in, Maria. Come on in, Gracie. Come on in, Donna. Come on in, Kenny. And all of you, you know, listen in, and more and more of you, all your names, come on in. And, and we're just going to be coming in and just worshiping the Lord. And Peter, uh, just distinguishing between a just barely made it entrance into the eternal kingdom and a richly abundant one. So it's kind of like those... Uh, uh, those games, you know, it's like that last minute touchdown, uh, you know, or that sliding into home and like a World Series game or something. And it's like, woo, we won, you know, everybody comes out and it's just, just uh, cr going crazy, you know. And that's what we want when we go to heaven. We just don't want to be embarrassed about uh, our unfruitful life or our life that was just didn't have the, the character, like we're a Christian, we know we're born again, but, you know, we weren't really living for the Lord. No way, no way, right? So, we want heaven's uh, blessing, we want Jesus to say, come on in, and, and greet all of our loved ones and that have gone before us, and, and just to have that rich, wonderful experience, and it's the best life ever, amen, is to know Jesus for me to live as Christ and to die as gain, live for the Lord, you'll never be sorry. What you do now will last for all of eternity. Let's not live for worldly things or things that do not have value. Let's give it up. Let's give all those things up and, and just take them to the cross and follow Jesus and live that rich and beautiful life in Him for His glory. Amen? All right, let's pray together. Father, we just thank you so much, Lord, for this day and for this time to worship you. And we just love you, Lord, for uh, your word. And we just pray that our life will not only, uh, you know, we won't just have that, that walk with you, or just the talk, I should say, but also the walk. And that we would have the growth in our spiritual life, Lord God. And we just pray that we'll be doers of the word and not hearers only. And to live that beautiful life in Christ, we pray, for your glory. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. All right. Well, we're going to worship the Lord. And there it is. Let's sing that chorus. Are you ready? Shout to the Lord. Shout to the Lord on the earth, let us sing.
Then may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord just fill you with his spirit and just give you such a wonderful, wonderful week in him. As you just go and shout to the Lord and just love him with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength. May the Lord fill you with his characteristics that he just loves to have in your heart, that you could just live that godly and upright life in Christ and shine the love of Jesus everywhere you go. May the Lord give you peace. May your soul be edified. And may you just stay in the love of Christ and under the banner of his grace, knowing how much he loves you so much. He loves you so much. And you love him because he first loved you and he first loved us. So God bless you and keep you in Jesus name. Amen.